Sam Altman said something uh, a few weeks ago where he he described how different generations uh, were using ChatGPT, and you know people like me use it as a super Google search plus uh, sketching out on bits of paper as I do my thinking. And he described that you know the the younger cohort, which I guess was people in their sort of early twenties, use it as a perma companion for you know, not to not to figure out Turkish economic history in the 13th century, but to figure out the status of their relationships or make sense of their of their feelings. That to me feels like a more profound change than speeding up a particular bit of a company's processes. I think it will change religion. Some people will start to regard the AIs as oracles, in some cases even gods. What we view as the uniquely human qualities will evolve. Th- those matters are all hard to predict, but it seems obvious we're in for some pretty big shocks. Yes. He said, by 2030, AI could start to fundamentally challenge what it means to be human and cause an identity crisis as we lose our position to the- these entities that could be smarter than us. The AI is already smarter than I am, even if you just restrict it to economics. If there were some kind of like economics Olympics and I was up against O3, O3 would beat me. That's not hypothetical. It's not the future tense. That's today. What's interesting is how little it matters. So demand for my services, insofar as I wish to supply them, it's up, not down. And that's mm-hmm. what take a long time. Did you have a particular oh shit moment when you were using these large language models for the first time in the last few years? Was there a moment where you saw something that you hadn't expected? First GPT-4, that was my first moment. It's like, whoa. Now, much earlier, I had moments you know, in my history with chess, which is extensive, I saw the advancement of AI in chess, and I had many moments much earlier, you know, even before Deep Blue. Uh, but, you know, thinking about large language models, GPT-4, O1 Pro, and now O3 have been my biggest moments. And two of those are quite recent. GPT-4 now is a little, you know, two plus years ago. But the other two are, um, you know, months ago. And what was it that you saw in them that made them that moments of revelation? Real depth. So I use O3 a lot to ask it about classical music I'm listening to. And I'll say, well, I'm going to listen to Sibelius's first symphony. What should I listen for in the symphony? It's remarkably deep. You could almost say empathetic, thorough. It just understands the stuff better, I think, than any human source you would find. There are some hallucinations. They're not actually a problem with that kind of query. Mm-hmm. Well, well beyond what you would expect. And then if you count breadth, I mean, they can answer almost anything. You could ask it about Turkish economic history in the 13th century, and you get something better than what you'd get from all but a handful of humans. So I think right now, asking O3 is not quite as good as asking the world's leading expert on a topic, but it's better than asking like a tenured professor who might work in that area who's at a top 10 or 20 school. And that's really impressive. So it's kicking our butts. Have you noticed that the types of people like you, perhaps, who lean into this and greet it with a degree of curiosity and joy compared to those who might see it and say, this is the end of days? Well, it's easy at my age. I have no plans to retire. But if I had to retire, I could just do so. So I don't feel I face any risk. I can experiment with it, try new things without a truly significant downside. But if I were, say, 20 years old, 25 years old, I would be highly uncertain about my future career plans. I wouldn't be sure what to do. I would do what you probably advise people to do, which is to get to know the AIs and stay flexible and then just see. But that's a somewhat uncomfortable position to be in, even if someone tells you, well, the world will have a lot more wealth and you'll live to be 97, so don't worry. It's still an uncomfortable position to be in. There was a, a, a meta survey uh, uh, that was published in in Nature as an open preprint, so it hadn't gone through peer review. Looking at learning outcomes uh, across a range of other studies, right? That's what a meta st- st- study is, which had looked at people using GPTs to support them, and it had found some good examples of behaviours that led to good outcomes for students. But it does require a real pedagogical shift, and that kind of pedagogical shift means you know, institutional approval. It means finding the resources and the capacity as a, as a teacher or lecturer within a department to be able to do that. And, and all of that is, I suspect, under strain, not just in the US as it is in the UK, but in other parts of the world. 
Exactly. And it means admitting that homework is obsolete, that the easy ways of grading people, like computer-graded exams, they're obsolete. Faculty teachers need to be more like mentors. That can be rewarding, but it's very time-intensive. It's not something you can do by formula. It's not something an okay teacher will even necessarily be very good at. But our ability to reshuffle the personnel, the procedures, we just seem to me really quite frozen. The whole system is set up to incentivize getting good grades. And that's exactly the skill that will be obsolete. Yet our institutions of education, I don't see that they're changing at any level whatsoever. There's a lot of hand-wringing about how do we stop people from cheating and no look at what should we actually be teaching and testing. Yeah, I don't doubt many people will use all this to become lazier, but also a lot of other people will learn like never before. And one of my hopes is you have places such as most of Africa where there's immense human curiosity, but major institutional obstacles, and that something like open source AI on mobile devices will give some subset of these people an incredible education, maybe in some ways better than what a lot of us will be getting, and they'll do a kind of leapfrogging. We don't know that yet, but I think there's quite a good chance that's what we'll see. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. If you want to know when the next conversation is released, just hit subscribe wherever you're listening. That's all for now, and I'll catch you next time.